when you have too many rules, yeah. then it gets a little bit out of control. Like, and they're tough to enforce. And it's, now it's hard there's, to enforce. Then there's gray areas. Yep. I think consistency is like the most important proponent of being successful yeah. as like a content creator. It, it's like, think about TV. Mm -hmm. If you know your TV series is going to be on like on Monday night at seven, you know to show up for that. Yeah. So it's the same thing with content. Like if you're putting content out and it's like kind of sporadic, unless you're Mr. Beast, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to be consistent. That's how, you know, I grew Twitch, like the live streaming. When it really grew, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it five times a week, yeah. Monday through Friday at three o'clock or five o'clock, whenever I started. And it's going to be the same time every day. Yeah. So people knew to show up. You don't even have to think. So YouTube is the same. I would want, I want to be able to get to that point where I have enough videos uh, in the bank where we can just drop them. Yep. But also you have to kind of find the passion. I don't want to just put things out that I don't really care about. Right. Cause you could, you could kind of go endlessly on like sim tricks. Right. And that's probably easy for you to yeah, that's film. easy bread and butter. Yeah. People want to learn. Right. Right. The, the best videos I've put out so far on YouTube are teaching people how to break properly or showing proper ergonomics, showing um, FOV. Yeah. Like, those are the most popular or talking about like comparing Sims. Everybody, right. it's like so tribal. It's crazy. What with Sim stuff? Oh man, it's, it's insane. Like with games in particular. You'll have like diehard Assetto Corsa fans, diehard iRacing fans, diehard um, R Factor fans. Right. And like they all think they know the best. Meanwhile, not a single person has driven a car in real life. Right, right, right. And right. they'll tell you what the best sim is. It's the most peculiar conversation you could ever have online. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't, I, for me, I don't understand it, like how someone can say, the, this is the best force feedback. Okay, what does the best represent? Like the best thing that it feels for, like it feels good for you. Right. Is it realistic? Like what what are the parameters? Are we comparing it to the real car? Because if so, please let me know your reference point. Yeah. And if you can't, like how can you say it's the most realistic or yeah, this is the best sim because <laughs> this drive, which drivers? I want to know. Yeah. Tell me, tell me which ones think that this is the best. Right. And I'm, I'm not like paid for or bought by anybody. I really don't care what the best sim is i just want to have the most fun right so when i have these conversations online it's so strange because it's so tribal they will fight you to the end and it's not like they'll reinforce their game they're just gonna try to talk bad about the other thing right right, right. that's how it usually goes down so what is the best um right now from like at the current moment of recording i would say overall as a package not perfect but i racing probably the best yeah. That's the only one I've ever, well, I've been on, I shouldn't say that. I've been on a set of Corsa just to run like Toronto Indy and Three Rivers. And what do you think about it? Yeah, it's not even close to iRacing. It's funny, like, and you're a driver, right? Yeah. You, you drive cars? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, cool. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like anyone I've, I've spoken to that, that is a racer, and this yeah, just validates right. it. They're like, yeah, it's, it's good for learning the track because maybe other sure. platforms will have certain tracks that iRacing won't. And iRacing's not perfect, but at least it's close enough where the timing and the cadence of everything, specifically the braking, that's yeah. where I think everything you can tell me as well. Braking is how you go fast in race cars. Yeah. Like if yeah. you're if you're not good at braking, you're not gonna be a good driver. Anyone can hold the throttle down. Yeah. It's just how long you do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you you know, turning. Yeah. How do you get more turning, less turning? How do you sharpen the corner or open the radius? It's all done through your feet. Yeah, it's all in the brake pedal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if the braking is off, then the game's not realistic. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I, I have told this story, but I've raced uh, a set of, like, ACC. I had to do um, a sim race that actually counted for points in a real race. What? Yeah. No, spa, you didn't tell this. Spa 24. Wait. Okay, back up. Yeah, what, yeah. what year is this? Last, uh, 2022. Okay, what series? In like Fanatec GT World Challenge, like okay. Spa 24 Hours. GT World Challenge. Yeah. Spa 24 Hours was on a sim. Like one of the biggest races. No, well, you had a sim pr like component okay. that actually counted towards manufacturer points. So you would get nominated as a driver to represent your manufacturer. Okay. And not a lot of people wanted to do it, to be honest. It was more of a burden because it took time away from your weekend. But it was mandatory for those mandatory. manufacturers. 
Like they had to perform. Yes. So you were for Mer- Mercedes? Yeah. Like they picked you, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. I don't anyway. know why, because I don't really like ACC in particular. I, ACC being a set of Corsa. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So a set of Corsa Competizione. So it's oh, like the GT3 see. version of the game. Now they have GT4 and Porsche Cup and stuff like that. Okay. But, the, like, listen, it's a fun game. It can be fun. Yeah. And I don't want to, like, completely just ruin everyone's day by saying it's terrible. But like, it's fun. It's just not really accurate, Mm -hmm. specifically when you break. And I've actually had a discussion online with people about it, and I've overlaid telemetry uh, telemetry to, like, see, okay, you're holding the brake at, uh, like, whether it's 100% value, 50%, 80%, it doesn't matter what the percentage is, because in sim racing, it's more percentage rather than pressure. Sure. But it's just the timing of how you hold your peak pressure. You just hold your peak pressure for way too long Mm. in ACC. Mm. And the timing and the cadence of like how you attack, how you roll into the break, how you hold and release off on the trail break and hold that last little bit is not really accurate in ACC. So when I went from that sim race, which I did actually pretty well, I had a hardware issue with um, like the car wouldn't refire in the pit stop. Otherwise, I would have been second, which was like re- reasonable. Sure. The guy that was first was like actually really, really good at the game. Yeah. Um, I ended up fifth. Okay. So I still got some prize money, actually. But that's, like, that's got to be so frustrating. Like, it's one Dude, thing. I when sat the car- for 15 seconds. I'm like, button's not working. Button's not working. I don't know why. Like, I still, to this day, I didn't even question. I just literally left the sim uh, stage, and I, like, went back. I'm like, I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> it was so frustrating, but, I mean, it was fun. It was a fun race because we were all real drivers. And right. We were just smashing each other a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's just the timing was so off on braking i went back to the real car and my next session was qualifying oh so you're oh dude i hit the brake pedal i was like oh i broke too much because like it's maybe different now a little bit there's been an update since then but i tried it it's not much different and again i'm not like the most uh prolific acc driver yeah so maybe i need to learn how to go better at the game but instinctually as a racing driver in real life I didn't really see a lot of uh, transferables. Mm. I went to the real car and every corner, it's like you have to break at 100% or like very high values and sustain the pressure right. in, in the game. Whereas in real life, you might break with 20 bar of pressure, which is like, okay, let's say it's 20% yeah. of the maximum value, like 100 bar being the peak yeah. threshold. So you might be at like 20 bar, 15 bar for a really quick entry because if you break hard, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, like you're going to upset the car. Weight transfer to the front, very unstable platform in a high-speed corner. But in the sim, if you don't do that, you actually get oversteer. So you need to almost drive it in on the ABS. So, so you it, have to engage ABS and get out of it. Right. So is it is it just not enough? Like, what does iRacing do so well? Is it is it that there's real drivers saying, hey, like guys like you saying, hey, this isn't accurate. Here's my actual data or like, you know, yeah, overlaying maybe real car data f- from that, you know, the exact same car, exact yeah. same track. Here's the real life. Here's the sim. Like, is that what iRacing does well? Um, I would say they make an effort. Okay. Um, I know that for like the Mercedes, AMG GT3 and GT4, I was part of the development team. Yeah. So they asked for my advice. In iRacing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On iRacing. So it wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. I think there were limitations with the tire model, the way they have it. It's not horrible, but it could definitely be better. Actually, what's funny is when we first developed the car, it feels very similar in terms of speed and the way the tire felt. So the current tire in the IMSA WeatherTech series that is introduced for 2024. Okay. Cool. Much quicker tire, a second and a half quicker. And that's what the number one complaint was when it first launched was it was way too overpowered. Mm. Like so strong, car was good, and it was good. It felt like the real car. In real life, the Mercedes platform is like one of the most stable. So it was easy to drive for the majority of the player base, and it was the meta car. Everyone ran it. Right. right. So it was a little like it was a Merc Cup. You know, right. you'd have a full grid of Mercedes. Oh, so everyone showed, yeah, yeah, And yeah, then yeah. there'd be, like, the one guy in a Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From, right. like, 2002. Right. <laughs> yeah, just because he's memeing. Right, right, right. But, so, uh, yeah, they changed it quite a bit. And it's actually a little a little broken now where it doesn't feel that great. Mm, mm. And it hurts me because I want to drive it. But it just, there's something a little off. I'm sure I'll be called back up to help fix it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do my best. Obviously, it's not 100% in my control. I only give my feedback. Sure. Yeah. developers that are going to be able to make it good or not. Is there like a, 
they'll just call you up remotely. Like, is there like an iRacing office that's like super top seeker or has like no. wild sims in it or anything like no, that? No, no. I think they uh, they actually have a pretty modest team. Okay. It's, it's a lot smaller than people think. Hmm. I don't think there's... I could be misspeaking here, but I think there's like between 30 to 50 people. Wow. In the team. Like, it's a small team. When I worked on the development... It was like one sound guy, one graphics guy. It's like, hey, how does the how does everything look in the cockpit? Like, does it look accurate? And it was modeled after the car that I was racing, so they actually scanned our race car. Cool. In twenty twenty one, I think, or twenty twenty two, I think twenty twenty two. They scanned it. It's Sebring, yeah. Okay. It it's Sebring twenty twenty two, and um, yeah, they even had. Like our stickers and stuff inside really? the cockpit. Yeah, like they modeled everything. Oh, that's kind of should have stuck a little more Adna sticker I in there. Should have. <laughs> yeah, they probably would have taken it out. Yeah. There was actually a Bullet Bill sticker, okay. um, but they put like the silver bullet because our car was silver. Right. Um, they had to take that out. Okay. Obviously. Okay. So how did uh, how did your season go last year? The season last year was uh, pretty good, I would say. My most, well, I guess the busiest season of my career. Yeah. So which is funny. Ex- because explain what you were running. So, well, let me take you a step further back because end of 2022, um, won the Indy eight hour. Okay. And when was last, when was I on here? Uh, 2022. 2020. Early. Well, what's this year? I don't even. Yeah. 2024 or 2022. Yeah. Yeah, Spring of 2022. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, I only did four races that year, which was what happened. So yeah. Um. I was running with a team called Allegra Motorsports, which okay. I've run for over a long time. Right. And right. they just stopped racing mid-season. Sure. Which um, happens. Yeah. Yeah. Everything kind of stops at one point, and that was kind of their time. Yeah. It was unfortunate because I was so committed with them for that season, and it's like you can't pull out and deviate to another path because everyone's set. Every lineup is set. So right. I'm like, okay, take what I can get, and I got called up to do Spot 24, which was nice. And that's uh, what series? In GT World Challenge. Okay. And it's part of the Intercontinental GT okay. uh, Challenge or series. It's like a, the World Cup of GT3. Right. So there's uh, four or five rounds around the world. Nice. And they'll take Spa, Bathurst, uh, Indy 8 Hour, so, um, and various others. I ended up doing the Indy 8 Hour as well right after that. Yeah. And with the pro lineup of uh, Raffaele Marcello and Danny Yunkadea. Nice. We ended up winning. Nice. But already I was under review because of Spa. I think they really look at that series, and in quality I did pretty well. Okay. So they're like, hmm, you're a silver. So FIA silver ranking. So there's bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Right. you got to so, explain that again. Yeah. So bronze, and we're kind of all over the place. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll quickly get through that. Bronze is basically, to like in layman's terms, a gentleman driver that started late in life in racing. Sure. Over 30, I believe. And is, you know, businessman yep. or woman. Yep. Business person. Gets into motorsports and is... They're bronze. Bronze. They're s- seconds off. Sure. Then you have silver, which I believe it's under 30. And it's kind of like gray area. Right. The silver is the weirdest one because I was a silver for so long and I was getting paid to race. Right. And there are so many silvers right now that are getting paid even more than golds and platinums. Because it's desirable to be a silver. Oh, yeah, because the lineups require you to have more amateurs, so silver or bronze. And in IMSA, it doesn't matter what you are. If you're silver or bronze, you're the same. Right. One of the same, which is the weirdest thing. I think that they should just probably remove everything. Yeah, no kidding. And just make it easy because, like, the bronze are actually competitive, too. Um, and they can do well, you know, if you it's an pro- endurance race, you're not full, full qualifying yeah. pin the entire time. So. It's just weird. Yeah. And it makes it very odd to sell yourself because as a silver, if you're a fast silver, you are super desirable because if you have, um, let's say funding behind your team yep. and you're a fast silver, you're a huge asset because you have to run a majority of the race. Right. Let's say the endurance races. For instance, Daytona, Sebring. If you're two seconds off as a silver or a second off as a silver, it's not a huge advantage. It's not going to kill your hopes to win. Mm -hmm. But if you're one of the quickest silvers and you're matching platinum or gold pace, right, then it's an it's like a cheat code. Right, you end up naturally cycling to the front. Right, right, because you're yeah you're just as fast as the fast guys and the fast guys gets in. Yeah. So even if your BOP or your car balance or whatever, your parameters aren't like ideal, you always have a chance to win. Mm. 
which is kind of how it was at Allegra for me because I was a silver and I was finishing races sometimes because, you know, I'd have the pace to finish. And um, they didn't, I don't think the FIA really looks at IMSA that much because there are champions of IMSA that are still silver mm. and guys that like finish races and they're really good and like respect them. Like I, I genuinely think they can be professional ranked drivers, but right. they're still ranked as silver, which is very odd. But regardless of that, I got upgraded from silver yeah. to gold and then I was under review. So it was like the two week review period during 2022. Okay. And then we go out and we win the Indy 8-hour in the pro lineup. I'm driving with the full factory lineup. And at this time, I'm still with, linked with Mercedes. Right. Since 2001. So you're under review. Yeah. Like, already, it's kind of like I was a sim racer for Mercedes, which doesn't categorize me as a pro. Right. Um, and so I'm doing sim work for them and competing in sim races and representing as, like, a brand ambassador yeah. in the real world. Yeah. Yeah, so I do this Indy 8-hour, we win, and I appealed it during that time, and I guess I'm like, yeah, probably not going to win that appeal. <laughs> we just won, like, like, the World Cup, like, one of the rounds of the World Cup. Right. And oh, you appealed so you could stay silver. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, so that's probably not going to go down well. And thankfully, it kind of all worked out well, because if I didn't have that momentum going into the following year and getting upgraded as a gold, I probably would have not been racing. Right. So everything kind of worked out timing wise. Um, so got upgraded to gold and like, damn, like this is going to suck. Harder to sell yourself. Yeah. And right. going like through November, December, I'm like, I have nothing lined up for next year. And now I'm a gold. Like what's going to happen? Am I still with Mercedes? Like, you know, right. what's my role going to be? And um, it worked out in 2023 where Windward Racing, they reached out, well, through Mercedes recommendation. Right. To end my performance at Indy, yeah, they said um, recommended the team to take a look at me as a driver, and right. they they looked at the performance, and they um, yeah they signed me up. So Good. that was like okay, cool. I have a full season. Yep. in GT four, GT four. Okay, yeah. So kind of a step down, but I don't really care. It's for me, it's professional it's racing. racing. I'm professionally racing. Yeah, and that's all I care about right. because every time you're in the car is an opportunity. Yep. So. I just want to win. I don't care what it is. Four wheels, I want to win it. Yeah. So that's IMSA GT4 you ran. Yeah. So okay. full season of uh, Michelin Pilot. And that was going to be a new challenge because now I'm with um, a gentleman driver. Right. Uh, like an older gentleman who started ra racing only uh, seven years prior to the season. Wow. And he's 65. Wow. Yeah. So, so you're doing some coaching too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the cool thing is um, Bryce Ward was my teammate. Yep. And he, his work ethic is phenomenal. That's great. So yeah. he really wanted to do well. And the family environment there was like perfect. It, yeah. it was kind of like Allegra. Yeah. You know, they had that fa family environment. It wasn't so corporate and, um, you know, you just felt warm and welcomed. So I, I liked it. I enjoyed myself straight away, felt comfortable. First race was Daytona. And holy, that was a, that was a weekend and a half because a lot changed that weekend for the, you know, I guess for some others, it was unfortunate. But for me, it was really a good weekend. Uh, and Why? the GT4, um, I worked with Bryce a lot leading up to that. And we did uh, well performance-wise. We were always, like, top of the charts in the practice sessions, like, or, or close to. And we were doing really well. Bryce was at a good level, actually, at Daytona. We okay. did a lot of sim work before. And unfortunately, we had a brake issue that race mm -hmm. where um, I think there was a, an issue with the master or with one of the calipers. It started leaking. Um, so we were several laps down. We were just circulating that race. But yeah. performance-wise, all weekend, first time with Windward, just kind of getting to know everyone. Um, it went really well. And in practice of the GT3, because they run GT3 and GT4, one of the drivers crashed in practice and broke his back. Jeez. In the final practice, or one of the final practices. So tubbed the car, broke his back, and it was like a really bad situation. Like we were all so concerned for for the driver and um and not once did i think like you know put me in it never, didn't really cross my mind until my, they started talking about who are they going to have well we need the backup car we i didn't even think they were going to have a car right but they ended up sending one of the truck drivers to pick up the backup car in texas drove it over um like it was a flat out it was the race before the race to get the car bring it it was a shell 
They prepped the car. Oh my goodness! All night they yeah. stayed up like literally three days straight. Prepped the car, um, and then they're thinking, okay, who do we put in the car? It's like the new guy or maybe some of the existing factory guys that are yeah. there, but they were you know busy doing other series like driving in LMP2 or whatever it was, or fly someone in. Right. But I guess based on the performance, they're like, okay, let's let's see. Right, and because you were in GT4, you weren't committed to that whole, what is it, the next weekend or the... No, it's all the same weekend. It's all the same weekend. It was Friday. Okay. okay. I you guys raced, raced before, yeah. And Saturday, so it was like Friday morning, there was a crash. Yeah. And I, I believe it was Friday morning. No, it was Thursday. Okay. It was Thursday. Thursday was the crash in the afternoon. So then it's like, okay, bring the car, prep it all Friday. And it's like, now we're, we're racing Friday. Had a good performance and gelled with the team pretty well. Nice. And then, so then Friday after the race, they have to make a decision. Like, what are we doing? So they end up leaning towards me and giving me the nod. And yeah, that was hectic because we had to like go through procedures and I didn't get to turn a single lap before the race. So the first time I was in the car was in the race. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was like, cool. Yeah. But you know, it's Daytona and I raced there in GT4. Quite a bit different though in GT3. Sure. And like recalibrating your mind for that speed. Yeah. It's like GT4, the good thing is about the Merc is the GT4 transmission and gearbox drivetrain is all the same. Okay. So the car feels quite similar, mm. but different engine, like different tire, less downforce, more weight, right. less power. So it's like driving a GT3 in the rain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was like, as long as I can calibrate my mind for like that extra speed yeah. and there's no pressure, it's 24 hours. So my job is go out there right. and, um, and just not wad it up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My job is literally circulate the car and I'm thinking I'm just a supporting role. Yeah. I'm filling in, just get the job done. That's what you have to just think about. Just don't crash. Yeah. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm not thinking, I never think don't crash. Of course. Of course. But. I guess now I can think about it. It's like, just don't crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm so focused on just, I know what I need to do. Yeah. Like my mind is locked in on the job that needs to be done. It's not to be a hero. Mm -hmm. It's to be reliable. So go out there and just my luck. The first lap is like six GTPs. I'm on cold tires. It's like the second stint of the race because they had Russell Ward start the race and he did an amazing job. He went from dead last to like P6 or something. Okay. It was like pretty phenomenal. So you jump in? Yeah, I jump in. I'm like, oh my God. There's like, okay, we have a chance here. So I'm like, just get it done, lock it in, get a feel for it. And my first, my outlap on cold tires, and it's treacherous with cold tires. It wasn't very warm. Mm. It was the most difficult thing ever because we had six GTPs on the outlap and they're on left, on the right side and the left side. I'm like, keep it straight. Just keep it straight. Um, so once I got the out lap, heating the tires, first few laps, I was like, okay, first lap was good. Second lap was better. Third lap was really competitive. Fourth lap was like the fastest lap of the race. Perfect. I was like, all right, I feel good. Feeling good now. Yeah. Uh, or one of the fastest laps. I shouldn't say the fast. I don't know. At that point, I'm just driving the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're relaying the information. Right. So I felt like pretty calm at that point. And then it just, um, the rest clicked. That race went really, really How'd well. How'd you guys finish? We were leading overall of the whole GT field, GTD Pro and GTD. Nice. So, like, the GTD Pro is no driver ratings. Right. So, that means you can have platinum and gold. Yep. And then GTD, you have to have two silvers or a bronze, a silver, a bronze, bronze. Like, you have to have two amateur um, yep. drivers, and then you're allowed two pro drivers. Got it. But you can't have two platinums. So it's complicated. So freaking complicated. You dude. need a degree in mathematics. You need to be an academic to understand. So this it system. sounds like I should go and try and be a bronze driver somehow. Yes. Okay. If you're a bronze. <laughs> That's like, what I take away from just this. Just hit up some uh, <laughs> WEC teams. Kay. You're in. Okay. So in GTD, there are limitations. GTD Pro, no limitations. You can run open driver lineup. Got it. So same BOP, same car. So we were right. leading overall. Unfortunately, with uh, like 38 minutes to go. Um, our finishing driver just had an incident and yeah. it was not his fault. It was, uh, you know, just nature of the beast restart <laughs> yeah. gaggle of cars exiting turn one and nowhere to go. So corner one there is freaking wild. Yeah. And we were fighting, like we were fighting for the win Yeah, the whole time. It, we actually lost the lead off of it's, it's complicated there on restarts the way it works because when you're a GT car and you're so far back in the queue, mm. there's, and 
last year you had five categories. You had GTP, LMP2, LMP3, GTD Pro, GTD. So they, crazy. they segment the classes on the restart. So like you're starting with your class. So if you're a GTD car, you're starting like way back and there's 61 cars. Right. At that point in the race, less because yeah, attrition. Yeah, yeah. So, but there were a lot of people running still, probably like 45 cars still in the race. So when you're that far back, people play games on the, on the restarts where they hang back and get runs. Yeah. And that's kind of like yeah, because you got that's what you have to look. You've for. got like half a lap of the oval to Dude, get a run it's on wild. the restart. You're going mock Jesus by the time you hit the start finish yeah. line. Like yeah. it's it's insane. So you need to play that game and also um, know what what's coming. Right. right. You have to read the car behind you on the restarts because you're only fighting the guy behind. That's right. what you have to think. Right. Right. And if the guy's dropping back and trying to get runs, or two cars back trying to drop back and get runs, you have to back the queue up. Right. You have right. to back up to him. Yeah. 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 You can't just let him blow your doors off in the corner it happens one. in eye racing all the time right right people on starts like a hero going from dead last it's like p1 before the strike <laughs> <laughs> just gets a monster run oh man so yeah we end up crashing um but regardless it was um i had a very good time you know the, the the guys i guess in the beginning thought all right just go in and do a, just circulate around and yeah. i think the performance, I was very pleased with it. Like, yeah. I felt comfortable in the car. It was one of the best cars I've driven. Nice. And that's when I realized, okay, Windward's actually, they're a top-notch organization. Good. You can just tell. Like, the car was easy to drive. Everything's dialed in. And, um, yeah, it was really, really smooth race, considering they built the car overnight and didn't have a single lap on it. Crazy. And it's the backup car. So Crazy. Clearly not as quick as the main car. So are you, are you back uh, running GT4 again this year? Same deal? Um, it's kind of, um, I can't say anything okay. yet. So you're up, you're still trying to figure it out for this year. I'm not figuring anything out. <laughs> okay. No, you just I can't just, say anything I can't yet. say anything Okay. Yet. Cool. Um, the only going to go to Daytona. Oh yeah. I'm okay. already confirmed for the Rolex. Cool. So, uh, last year, yeah, I ended up doing GT4 and it went really well. We won a ton of races. Yep. Um, actually won Bryce Ward his very first race nice. ever nice. in his career at 65 years old. That's he did great. a mega job in Detroit. Yeah. We're the uh, first. Oh, I saw the highlights from that, dude. You wheeled it. Yeah, it was yeah. a mega race. Uh, and he did such a good job. Like, you know, I can't, I think I touched on it briefly, but Bryce did such an amazing job last year. And I actually want to talk about the story of what, what transpired throughout the year. Yeah. Because what we did in sim racing was insane for him and for my group of drivers that I Oh, yeah, I, I want to ask that too, yeah. So, yeah, he worked so hard and he got really quick. I think Daytona's an uh, easier track to learn, so there's only six corners and, yeah. like, two that are important. So you can be relatively quick. So is he, <clears throat> like, to touch on him for a bit, like, because there's so many guys like that, did he retire and sell his company, or is he still working full-time? Yeah, like, he's working full-time. Okay. So he, but he went racing. So Tecumet is his company okay. and uh, family business. Yeah. So they um, recycle catalytic converters. So okay. they're in automotive. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's doing really well and loves motorsport. Yeah like really, really loves motorsport and his son as well. So cool. Russell Ward, his son, runs the team. So nice. Windward Racing is Russell's um, team and he runs the whole thing. Okay. It's incredible what they've done. They have a huge operation globally. Nice. Uh, so they have DTM, GT World Challenge Europe. Wait, they have a DTM team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they when have a two-car. When did they start this, this team? Um, so in Europe, they took over HTP Motorsport, which is, uh, the former, like I would say factory supported team of Mercedes. Okay. Um, and then, so they took over HTP, it was HTP Windward. Yeah. Then it's now just Windward okay. Racing. Wow. I didn't realize and they were so big. They started the U.S. operation with GT4 and Russell and Bryce both ran as a father son in GT4. Russell, uh, he's continued on and he graduated up to GT3 and is a really, really top driver. Right. And then um, his Bryce, his dad, stopped racing for a year or two and then got back into it in GT4, which is where I came into the mix. Right. Because they wanted a driver that was good with coaching. Sure. And also that could um, be reliable and quick. Yeah. So we ended up winning. Yeah. Detroit. We won uh, Road America, but then we had a little bit of an issue with post-race tech, which, um, I mean, the rules are the rules, and it was what it was. Um, yeah. But was it I would have liked to see it done a little bit different. You said it was the fuel cell that was the, too big? So the fuel capacity was 0.4 liters too large. But, um, you know, those that know 
would would understand the parameters of like we're not obviously cheaters, right? Um, you, the fuel if you were going to cheat, it would be bigger. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> and not such like an obvious thing. We know they check capa- capacity, so right. we're always safe on that. But I think it was just so quick after the session. It was like twenty five minutes after the race, and the fuel cell in the Merc is um, like a plastic bladder. Mm. So with heat, there's expansion, and I th- we did the test immediately after, and we passed. But there's only one audit on the fuel cell, so they won't retest it. No. So it's frustrating. It was frustrating because we did a good race at Road America and I'm still proud of it. I don't care about the results. I'm very proud of like what we yeah. achieved as a team because it was a very well managed and calculated race from the strategists, engineers, and I was proud of like the fact that I was able to get those fuel numbers and still maintain the pace under that pressure. It was right. a pretty wild one. I remember it. I was like really satisfied. Yeah. Regardless, I didn't even care. The result, it's not like we were in the championship. We had too many DNFs before that from like silly mistakes from others that took us out in the beginning of the races. But um yeah, it was just it was really nice, you know, for Bryce as well to feel that again that we can continue to win and we ended up winning Indy uh the Indy 8 hour, uh Indy 4 hour race, the okay. Enduro. That was a uh, one of the best races of my life actually. And one of the most exciting races if you go back and watch that, it is really, really this. exciting. Yeah. Uh, it Come was down to the wire. Dude, it was insane. Last, like came down to the, like, the last lap. Nice. After four hours of, it was the most intense battle brawl. It was like a street fight. Nice. Yeah, it was good. It was like karting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, like yeah. a four stroke go-kart race. For four hours. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I was so charged up. You, like the emotional, like the release after that race I, I'm not a very emotional person in the car. I'm very robotic. Yeah. Very social in real life. But in the car, I'm information-based. So it's like, give me info. So we were saving fuel. We were literally, I'm not joking, on fumes when we stopped. Nice. So a lot of things played out in our favor with safety cars and things like that, which made it easier. But we were following fuel numbers. We were battling like hell. It was insane. And there were a lot of moving parts. But, um, and it, some things happened in that race that it was like a little disrespectful as well in terms of driving standards. Mm-hmm. So it kind of made me a little bit more angry as well. Yeah. 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 It's always good to win but, those ones. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it was like the most, it was the sweetest thing ever. Cause as soon as we crossed the line, I just screamed and I'm not that guy, Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I had to let it out. It, it was as if I was fighting for my life. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if you had that before. Oh, for sure, for sure. Probably in karting. Yeah, probably in karting. Right? You just have like the most insane battle. Yeah, and you win when you come out on top of that. It's the most satisfying feeling. For sure. Yeah. So for I just sure. had to let it out. My voice was gone after. I was not on the. I didn't want to blow people's eardrums out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I was just. I had so much emotion inside. Yeah. When it's it's so it's funny. I like, was even crying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, it was like. I couldn't control my body. I, it was I was so locked in. I couldn't see anything because it was dark. I lost a mirror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like so many things, and I'm like, okay, this felt good. Yeah, it's it's one thing. It's those are the best wins. Like it's one thing to be like, okay, I'm gonna whatever. Say in karting, for example, like I'm gonna run second. And I'm gonna pass him here, and then you execute that and you win the race. Okay. Yeah. But if it's like a full battle the whole time and you end up on top just on pure battling, that's yeah. the best, right? Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. So yeah, to win so many races uh, that year with Bryce, and we could have won more. Yeah. But tell me about the sim stuff. Yeah. Well, he um, he improved his pace insane, like an insane amount throughout the season. Daytona, like I said, was relatively easy in terms of the layout. So it's mm. not hard to be close-ish, like within a second and a half, sure. two seconds. Then when you go to Sebring, a little bit more difficult. So th- we were struggling a little bit on pace, I would say. But we really started working at that point and bringing in our online team. So I have a team called the Moradness M Squad. Okay. So it's a... iRacing team? iRacing team, yeah. Kay. So we started that initially as like a fun community team, more intimate settings. We can do some races once a week. Mm -hmm. Then it evolved a little bit into, okay, let's do some endurance races together, like special events. And we had people in the team taking responsibility for organizing things. Then we started doing training and then we started doing more and more and more and more and leagues. And it started becoming like a family. And people will tell you in that team that the, the guys in that team are better friends to them than their own friends in real life. Like they're closer with the teammates, they probably spend more, more hours together they do, every <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, we we spend our time on Discord. We have a private channel for the M Squad guys. Yeah, and you know we have 
our special liveries. Like we all look the same. We have our avatars. We have a design crew. Like we have, it's actually a professional, like it's an established program now. Yeah. And it's developed because we have people that have incredible skills in the team and it's community based. So everyone kind of chips in and does uh, what they can. So some guys are good with IT and they can help with setting things up. Some guys are designers, mm. whatever it may be. Um, so it's interesting. I brought those guys in. It's amazing for them. They can learn from real drivers. And I'm also teaching Bryce how to drive him. Naturally, it's it's uh, rolling onto them. Mm, mm -hmm. So they're learning about real life racing scenarios, how Wait, to battle. So you brought them to the track? No, no. Right, so brought I them brought them online. Okay. Together. Yeah, yeah. So we started doing some iRacing sessions together. Right. Um, going over telemetry, mm. things like that to get Bryce better in terms of his brake shape. Because I racing, I find the GT4 car is very, very similar okay. to the way the real car drives, and especially with the equipment I have, I've really dialed it in. I have good top level equipment now, and it's got, gotten to a point where it feels almost one to one, minus the sustain G's, but sure. the brake feel is identical. Okay, so now the guys are driving with Bryce. Even when I'm not available, they're driving with him. Yep. There's some good guys, and they know the technique, how to brake. Right. And it's transferable. So they're teaching Bryce. I'm teaching Bryce. Now we have 30 guys we can battle on the track, so we can simulate racing. Wait, your team is 30 guys deep? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, and all different skill levels. We have, like, really average or below average, yep. and all the way up to really, really good, almost quicker than me. Wow. On the sim. Okay. Um, and they put the time in. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So... And guys that we've developed from very low level to incredibly high level, huh. right? So yeah. if you know I rating, yeah, we've had guys from in the two thousand range, and now they're in the eight thousand range. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. So it's a development program at the end of the day. Yep. So we're developing Bryce. We're developing the guys on the team. Everybody's benefiting from this. Bryce is getting better. Sure, he's learning how to race better. So we had incidents in the middle of the season where he was having DNFs. Guys were running into him. Probably in any situation, you know, you could always do something to influence it. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you can always blame the other guy, but then you can say, what can I have done better? Or 100%. Because the, the outcome is you end up wrecked. Yes. And that's simply the outcome you need to avoid. Exactly. Yeah. I never put blame on others. Sometimes there's things. Sometimes like, in the heat of the moment, maybe on the of radio. Course. <laughs> Actually, pretty much every time. Yeah. <laughs> every time on the yeah. radio. That guy took me out. Then you look at it. Damn, I turned into him. Oh, yeah. I probably should have waited before yeah. I said that. <laughs> I'm trying my best now to always wait because it's like something you're told in media training to wait before you see the replay. Then you make your assessment. You have to. You yeah. have to. I got on the radio this year. I ran. Ranger blew up right in front of me. I just. Out of control, straight into the wall, like yeah. instantly, right? And I'm like, I I got hit from behind, guaranteed. <laughs> like, it was Grosha. Yeah. <laughs> no, Erickson. It was yeah, Erickson. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you have to like look and see what happens. You like, have to. And especially on sim racing because there's net code, which is a difference in um, like server registration, like where you are in relation to the other guy. 100%. Because there's internet speed, right? Oh, actually, funny story. I was having lunch with Kenny Reedman the other day. Oh, yeah. and he said, oh, dude, he wrecked me. He, he claims your internet cut out. Yeah? Yeah, that's what he claims. I think he's right. <laughs> that's what he claims. I he think goes, he's right. Because I wa really wasn't trying to wreck him. <laughs> yeah, because I went to look at the replay, yeah. and I was so pissed. I'm like, man, why would Kenny do that? Like, <laughs> yeah. he's my buddy. Yeah. And then um, and then I went to look at the replay, and I disappeared. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I can't He's play. a pretty good sim racer now. He just got yeah. a setup, and he, dude, he, like, he runs a ton. Yeah, yeah. I see him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's gotten better. Because I remember when he was running in the beginning, yeah. he was on and off. He just got it, like yeah. he and he was back to cars from the... Yeah. I don't know. From the time he was 16, he hadn't run a car. Yeah. You're doing radicals now. Yeah. 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 So that was funny. I, my internet did cut out. Okay. So okay. Another situation where you've <laughs> got to watch the replay before you make an assessment. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So we learned. Bryce learned how to race. We, yep. we had all these guys um, learning from each other. Bryce started getting better. He started learning from those mistakes. Mm. You know, instead of getting taken out by a guy that would torpedo down the inside, you know, now he's aware, okay, maybe leave that space, let him blow by the corner, then turn in. Because a lot of the times we were getting taken out because guys were missing corners and sure. just T-boning us, and it was game over. Yeah. So the rule was we got to get to the pit stop. That's like the golden rule. Get to the pit stop, good things will happen. Yeah. And sure enough, anytime we made it to the pit stop, we pretty much were on the podium or won. You mean to the driver change? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the yeah, driver, yeah. Well, well, it's a one stop race typically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so get to the driver change and survive that first stint because it's the most important part. It's where sure. the most variables are in play. Yeah. Um, different skill levels, you know, different racecraft abilities, and or lack of. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you said it, not yeah. me. Uh, so you have to be really heads up in those first laps, especially. Yep. And look at the big picture. So maybe sacrificing your position on track to let someone go by because it really is irrelevant. So many times we've won races from being P nowhere, just being safe, pitting early, getting lucky with the yellow because usually it always comes. Yep. On that driver change period, there's a lot of uh, madness <laughs> yeah. that goes down. Yeah. Cold tires, you know, amateur drivers in, pro drivers in with cold tires, like trying to fight for position and a lot of things happen. So yeah. it was always important to get to that pit stop and driver change. And we worked on that in the sim. We created the most insane scenarios. I said, guys, literally no rules. Just do everything you want. Anything mm. you can think of, like moon shots, like no braking, anything. So oh, okay. we really simulated some peculiar scenarios. Right. And Bryce started like being more heads up. So he was like, oh, there's a guy that's going to lunge me in this corner. He's not going to make it. So he wouldn't turn in. Yep. And then he'd turn in after. And things like that would save our race. So yeah. little things on the sim where you can crash 10 times in the sim, reset. And then one, once you learn that, you know, if it happens in the real car, there's no reset. Right. You're done. Yeah. So it's frustrating when we're done. I'm like, oh, man, it's it sucks because obviously it's not his fault. But could we have done something different? Right. So then I took him put him in the sim and and just getting getting and he like wanted the reps to do in. it yeah he wanted to do it so bad like he would reach out to me say hey can we set up a session i'm like yeah absolutely 100 yeah. percent. i'm all for it so by the end of the season i made a joke i'm like it'd be funny to get these guys uh in the real car to see how they do i bet you they'd be quick and bryce is like okay yeah we'll do it i'm like haha funny yeah next session um bryce goes so when do you think is a good time to uh schedule a test for the guys i'm like you serious? Like, yeah, I'm serious. Like, yeah, I thought you were joking. He's like, That's no, I'm dead so serious. Cool. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. So I'm still thinking he's not really serious at this point. Like, he's just being nice. Yeah. Then the third session, he's like, okay, what, are, what about October 30th, October 31st? How is that for a date? Does that work for you guys? I'll rent MSR Houston and we'll get the guys out. I'm like, oh boy, like we're actually doing this. That's cool. So then I broke the news to the guys. I'm like, so how does everyone feel about driving a real race car? And they're like, ha, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, they all think it's a joke. Yeah, that doesn't just happen. It doesn't happen. Yeah. To anybody, especially average, regular sim racers. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show, like, I was very privileged and lucky to be with such a good organization. Yeah. And Bryce and Russell, who are so generous, imagine, like, how much that day cost and how much it could have cost. Oh, yeah. 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 And luckily, it all went well. So how'd you pick your guys? So it went based on... We ended up getting 16 out of 30. So okay. it went based on who participated in the sessions. Okay. So not everybody was there all the time. Coaching Bryce. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Got so it. there were like a core group of guys that were there every single time, like 15, you know, 10 to 15 times. Yeah. And so we took those guys and and a few more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just so did you make it like you made a YouTube video and uh, did you make it like a, a shootout or anything like that? Or just like, no, no, no lap laps. Times. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, we made sure no lap times. Yeah. They started getting a little spicy. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so the way that worked was I had an AMG Black Series, like the GT Black Series, which is a, it's a monster. Yeah. A lot of horsepower. Too many. Right. Street many car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Too many horsepowers. Yeah. Um, it was like, more difficult than the race car to drive. Sure, yeah, yeah. And, well, road cars are usually more difficult than race cars for, like, high-performance yeah. road cars. When you have road tires and high horsepower, and they they're usually, tricky. They usually set it away, send it away from the factory with a giant push. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, understeer to snap, like, uh, infinite oversteer yeah. off the corner. Yeah. Yeah, so I had this car as my lead car, okay. and then the way we did it is 16 people in a one-day test like how are we going to get 16 people in a car we had two yep so we had the race car and the test car and eventually we, well the test car was a race car for yeah. a little bit because yep. we had incidents in the season um so we we fitted like large guys in one yep smaller guys in the others just so it was easier for ergonomics and it actually went pretty smooth so you know eight cycles of of driving two laps lead follow for yep. each of them so they'd go nose to tail behind me as the lead car 
and some guys were more comfortable than others. Was that track on the sim that they could practice on? Uh, some guys practiced it. It okay. was, um, it's on like AC, like a set of course as a mod. Okay. And like, that's where it comes in handy, right? Right. A set of course. Cause so. for those guys, that would be huge to know yeah. the track. But I took them out before and it was a bit damp in the morning. It was raining and it <laughs> dried out. So it was like a recipe for disaster. I'm yeah. just like, Oh boy, yeah. it's going to be a doozy of a day. Uh, but, but no yeah. issues. No, good. I uh, just, well, a couple. Okay. Yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nothing big. It was more funny. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So um, took him out in a GT63 four-door. Yep. Also a monster. Yep. In the damp. Yep. That was fun. So showed them the track, really tried to get them calibrated. And so we had time in the morning because it was still damp. Then I took the GT4 out for just a shakedown, get some heat in the tires so they're not like on ice cold because that's tricky. Yep. Um, then the first guys go out behind me, lead follow. And the first guys were slow, really slow, nervous. For sure. Obviously. Yeah. You've but, got everything to lose and nothing to gain. Yes. Yeah. And the second, so that was like the, I would say lower end I rating guys. Mm -hmm. um, nervous just by nature, very nervous and, and um, tentative. And then we go to like the second cycle, which... We're like some good guys. Yeah. Now you get like 8K I rating, 5K I rating. So they're a little bit more comfortable. Actually, right away, immediately into it. And I was like, okay. They look like they're right at home. Yeah. And so I started pushing a little bit more. And um, the 8K guy was a little bit more comfortable than the 5K. I think also a bit more confident because he has done track days in, in a sure. road car. Big difference. And he has a like a, road, a Nissan 350Z road car. Perfect, yeah. Prepped with like... Um, suspension and stuff like that. So he's a little more comfortable. Yeah. And um, yeah, we get through everyone and yeah, we get to like near the end and one of our like, I'd say middle of the road guys, 4,000, 5,000 I rating guy. Well, maybe one, more than middle of the road. And I start getting confident because I see that they're comfortable. So I start pushing a bit more <laughs> and 700, I think it's like 700 horsepower, the black series. So I push out of one of the like, slow speed chicanes and then I look behind and I don't see a car anymore. I'm like, uh Oh, <laughs> but it was an innocent, like very low speed spin, kind of a clumsy, yep. you know, you just have too much wheel in it and you go on throttle. Yeah. Just loop. It's it. like, whoop, like the laziest, slowest spin. So thankfully nothing. It was, it was pretty sad to see, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you hoped a guy on your team would be better than that. Yeah, I, we made fun of him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. His name's Brockway, his last name, but we call him Spinway now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, he's, he was actually good. And the rule was if you spun, then you're done. Okay. Um, but I had a talk with him, and Russell's like, what do you think, man? I feel bad if we just sit him down, because they get another, like, four laps to run right. by themselves. No, no lead follow. Yeah. At, like, after lunch. Like, man, we got to let him run. Like, I'll talk to him. And it was it was my fault, ultimately. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fully say that. Like, I said right away, it was my fault. I got a little too confident with everyone's skill. I thought that, that they could handle it. Yeah. But, um, you know, we got to remember that was, like, after cycle seven. So I've done this so many times. I'm starting to, like, push, push, It's push. not the same guy in the car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the same. So I just went flat out out of the corner and he tried going flat. He's like, well, if that guy could do it, then I, I have a race car. I should be able to do it. But right. cold tires. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. going so slow. You're never going to get heat in them. No, they were yeah. like ice cold. Yeah. Yeah. So then in the afternoon, it went smooth. That's cool, man. That's so smooth. cool. Those they all guys, ran by themselves. They right? must've been so stoked. Dude, they were beyond. Yeah. I, we're going to release a longer form video more. Um, the first one we released was a bit too high pace, like the sizzle reel. Yeah. 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 I also want to release like an, a raw version where it's more interviews, emotion, like just of that'd vlog. Be, that'd be cool. What like, it's like to be there. Because everyone's told me, everyone, you know, in the last whatever, a couple months, they're like, you have to, have you seen the Gran Turismo movie? I have, and I haven't seen it. And they're like, you have to watch it. And that, that reminds me of, I guess, that concept. Like yeah. some guy, some sim racer gets a, a real drive. Yeah. It was uh, like a dream come true for them and yeah. for me. Yeah. I couldn't believe that we took, like, it's been my dream to take sim racers and put them in a car mm. and give them that experience. For and sure. The goal of the day wasn't to go fast. We didn't have lap times. We didn't have anything. Although I did have video and I took lap times <laughs> at the end. I knew who was quickest and, yeah. um, and it, I'm going to do a video on that as well. I think it's an interesting topic to take 
different skill levels from the sim and showcase what that translates to in real life. Right. Is it a one-to-one translation or are there anomalies? Like, are there right. um, things that maybe won't line up? Yeah. So you're so, going to do a video on that. And it's going to be interesting because more so in, in the middle range is where you have the biggest variance in skill. Sure. Around that, like three, four, five thousand I rating. Yeah. It doesn't exactly mean that you're going to be good or not. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But all the guys that were top I rating, like six, seven, eight thousand, are good. They're all pretty solid. Right. Because they've they've done but, so much racing, at, like yeah. even if it's online, so much and racing at that point. The technique's the same. Yeah. All they had to do was get used to um, the way, how much brake pressure they had to give. And that was the big thing for them. I told everyone the way you have your pedals set up in the sim is wrong. Everybody's trying to go for like really stiff, really short travel. Right. But the way, so I have simi- They've been in a real car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they've been in a Pinty's car. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I can't, I can't make mine work. <laughs> no, the Pinty's, yeah, you need like, <laughs> you need act, uh, SimiCube active pedals. You need like double the length. Yeah. I need like, to- you need about, you know, a foot. Make my travel. own, yeah. And then start pumping them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but no, I have SimiCube active pedals, which are like super expensive. Uh, they're motorized pedals. Okay. So it's a motorized brake. I can tune ABS onto it so it can do the same pulsation like the race no car. No way. Yeah. That's so I get the cool. travel. I have the exact feel of how it builds the pressure in the pedal. And when I get to the threshold on ABS, I get the, just a pulse. Not like, a, yeah. you know that high frequency yeah, vibration yeah, yeah. you get in a road car? Yeah. It's not like that, obviously. But you, you just get a, a have notification. Have you driven a race car with ABS? What have you driven with ABS? No, no race cars. Just street yeah. cars on the track with ABS. Yeah, yeah but they vibrate at high Way frequency. Way different, yeah, yeah. It's probably, no, like, I haven't. It's probably yeah. 50 hertz, I would say. Because in the race car, I would say it's around 10 hertz. The only reason I say that is because yeah. now I know through the software. Maybe a, a, um, the Mark II GT40, 4 GT? Yeah, that would... Probably be yeah, like yeah, that, race car yeah, BS. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you okay, can feel that, it's like yeah. one pulse, like boop. Yeah, yeah. Boop, yeah. Boop. yeah. Like it's it's a very uh, low frequency pulse. Yeah. And it doesn't happen often. It's almost like one time. It's just like, okay, you're in it now. But that must be a huge benefit on the sim. Huge. Like, well, to translate, I think anybody can be quick on the sim with whatever equipment, as long as you know the parameters. And get comfortable and know what you're dealing yeah. with. Because you're, you're driving an algorithm on the sim. That's what it is. You're not driving feeling. It's it's complete algor- It's an algorithm. Right. You're driving a line. You're driving a, a, a shape on the brake. Yep. It just so happens that in iRacing, it's relatively close. Like, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. You can be reasonable. Yep. And it's almost like the real car. I see what you're saying. So you have to have that intellectual understanding of what the algorithm is for iRacing. More or less. Whereas if you were, like, say, the most talented real race car driver on earth and you jumped in an i, you'd be shit. You would have to adjust. You'd have to adjust. I think like that you, if you're you the most incredible, f- yeah. I think in anything, if you want to adapt, like if I want to adapt to a set of Corsa, I could absolutely do it. Right. Do I want to? No. Right. The reason for that, and everybody's like, well, it's because you're not driving it well. I'm like, I don't want to drive it well because I don't want to learn that technique. Right. That's not, not the not technique, technique that's going to help yeah. me. Yeah. The technique that helps me is what I can find more so in iRacing, and it's clearly proven correct because we've taken a 65-year-old gentleman driver who just started racing, and he qualified fourth overall in the last race of the season at Road Atlanta against pros. That's legit. Against pro drivers. you got you got to tell that story on a YouTube video. Yeah, it's, just, it's wild. You know, Indy, he qualified seventh overall wow. against pros. And in Indy, it was all the pros driving because it's a four-hour race, so the yeah. pros started. I didn't. Okay. So Bryce qualified and started. I did three hours and 20 minutes to finish the race. He did 40 minutes to start. Wow. And so they had to, so that's how we kind of made the advantage back. Bryce was incredible. He got spun yep. on lap one. Very, like nothing he could have done on that one, but no damage. He opened it up just enough, got tagged, spun in the grass, kept going. Yep. From 30th or 29th, drove it back up to 13th in 40 minutes. He had so much pace and it just goes to show you that what he learned on the sim, he could translate that to the real car, and he improved, like, tenfold. That's crazy. Yeah, and we're going to hopefully pick up, uh, if I continue, um, yep. things are still up in the air. I don't know exactly um, what the plan is yet for this season. Like, I know there are things. Yeah. I can't say anything because it's all speculation at this point, but I'm driving at this point GT3 at Daytona, and if we can continue, which I would like to do. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I think that, 
you know, the momentum is just going to be insane from where we left off last year. I'd like to see it through because I want to win a championship. That's yeah. my goal. Right. You know, right. obviously, o- obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to win a championship and it would be so much more satisfying to take someone like Bryce, who's going to be 66. Yeah. Imagine winning at 66 years old awesome. against pro drivers where in GT4, it's um, you can't be platinum, but it's gold, gold. You're allowed to run an open lineup like that. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, oh, so it makes it more challenging, so but it you, goes to show. You we can two do guys well. against two gold drivers. Yeah, so bronze and gold. Yeah. I'm gold, he's bronze. Yeah. And, you know, it's open. And we have won races like that. So I don't see why you would really need the yeah. ratings. Wow. Because that's like a good case study. You can just study that there. In a two-hour yeah. race, you're able to still be competitive. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Like, I mean, I there's there's pros and cons to it, right? Sure, sure. Obviously, I mean, from my point of view, I think you probably as well, because you're like through and through race you're like i think that just uncapping everything and it will open opportunities up for everyone i agree yeah and it's just there's so many limitations where if you want somebody you can't have them if there were no rules on drivers and you're just either a race car driver or not a race car driver yep then it would make it easier yeah but i could see both sides of the argument yeah i'm a fan of less rules everywhere pretty much yeah i think um less regulation obviously there needs to be some You're talking about government or, oh, no. or not talk. <laughs> no. i won't reveal my views on that i'll tell you privately <laughs> less regulation yeah is a good starting point yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but uh you know <laughs> um i think just when you have too many rules yeah. then it gets a little bit out of control like, and there's tough to enforce and it's, now it's hard there's to enforce then there's gray areas yep if you i think there have been studies and maybe i'm not a, uh, an expert on this topic but even studies on speed limits. Yep. If you have the less speed limits you enforce, the more responsibility you have as a driver. Um, so then less accidents because yep. you're more switched on. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I can't really speak professionally on that topic because. No, I've uh, heard of that. Like in, in like, uh, yeah, they have done studies on certain roads where they actually increase the speed limit and got safer or something like yeah. that. Cause then you don't have the speed discrepancy. Maybe narrowing lanes, un- unlimiting speed. Yeah. And uh, psychologically, it all sounds what, wrong. Would that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what would that do to you, right? I always <laughs> think for me, how would it affect me? Yeah. When I'm driving at night, yeah. generally I drive slower. Like actually last night, sure. I was driving under the speed limit on the 401. I'm like, what is up with that? I'm doing 90 and it's 100. And I'm just chilling. Yeah. I don't speed naturally anyway. Yeah. Even if I was not live, I would, <laughs> like, <laughs> I would, I would say that. Yeah. I really don't drive fast on the road. Right. Um, it's just not something I seek as like, something that excites me i just always run the math on those big road trips though dude i go like oh if i'm doing 130 compared to 90 on a six hour trip i'm gonna be there a lot earlier (laughs) yeah i guess but then i can you know if i'm on the road a little bit longer i can listen to the gary clute podcast Uh, yeah yeah, yeah. a little bit longer sure you know know yeah that's a good point that's a good point but um yeah less less regulations less rules i feel like it would be nicer for the drivers especially in like WeatherTech, for instance, yeah. in GTD, if you just had one big GT class, it'd be so cool and easy right. to follow for the fans. Exactly, dude. It's like I'm fairly into racing and it's always so complicated for me. I have to go and figure out what's going on and then like get a handle on this season. Okay, they did this, yeah. this and this and now I can follow it. But yeah. like the average guy tuning in, like how the hell are you supposed to follow that? I always say like if I have a hard time, yeah, how's the average viewer going to perceive the race? I, I think it's amazing that they've taken out LMP3 class in the you like that? weather tech. Yeah, take it out. Okay. Less classes. Yeah. Look what happened. Every, all the LMP3 teams gravitated towards either GTD or LMP2. Right. So you take out one category. Now you have four. Yeah. It's already less complicated. Yeah. And eventually it'd be cool to just have two. Imagine like the old days, yeah. Grand Am, yeah, you had GT and prototype, exactly. It and then it's so easy nice. to understand. You you can see for your, <laughs> yourself that car looks like a spaceship. That car looks like a production car. Yeah, it's like okay, those are the two classes. Yeah, and it's easy to follow, so you know at all times what's going on. Yeah, but and then guys, I know there are more things. Like obviously, it's complicated with business because people sure people are investing into a certain ecosystem, so you can't just flat out say, well. This year, we're done with everything. You've invested everything into this, and now it's done. Yeah. You can't do that. I get it. But, but always, like, can't across... Can't we live in a fantasy world? Across the board, you make more rules, more categories, more shit like that, 
it makes it more expensive. Yeah. It makes it more complicated and it, and it decreases competition because now you're not, again, you're diluting. I'm, sp- I'm talking about racing, not the, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're, do you talk about that on your podcast? Do you talk about politics? Uh, I had, uh, I would, I, but it, like probably with the right guy, okay. like someone that I can, cause I'm not, I'm not the expert. Yeah. I may have opinions, but I, I would have someone on who. Yeah. Don't Might point be. at me. No, no, not you. I have opinions as well, you but sure. I don't voice them publicly ever because I, I don't think that voicing. I don't know. It's a weird one. I think it's your. I think it's your actions that are far more important than what you say. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to believe in in somebody else's ideology. I believe in what's right inside, and mm-hmm. I always do the right thing through action, like you said. Yeah. And That's I treat people the way I want to be treated. That's like the old saying, right? Yeah. Treat people as if you want to be treated. Old rule. As you, yeah. 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 For sure. For sure, yeah. Like you can you can talk all you want, I think, but like, what you really believe is what you do, right? And I live that every day. Yeah. Like how I am on a camera or on a live stream or a YouTube video or at the racetrack is literally how I live my life. I don't want to live a lie. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. I find and, it and to be sad. Well, and it has to, it. You have to do that because you're you're a public guy and you do a YouTube channel and you do a bunch of streaming and stuff and people smell like you know fakeness or insincerity insincerity a mile yeah. away and then they don't they don't gravitate towards that personality like yeah. someone who's like raw and open then they like that person because they're just like them they can relate yeah right? absolutely we're no different everyone's yeah. human i made it the same material yeah yeah As so how else. uh okay run me through because you're a modern day race car driver so you've got like 53 different streams of income <laughs> run me through oh yeah what you do I think that's the right there. That's the most important thing. If you want to take any advice, whether you're in racing or anything else, it's so important nowadays to have multiple streams of income. It's such an old, like traditional thought to have one job, one stable job, because you know, the problem is at any moment that could be ripped out underneath you. Yep. And As race car drivers know that oh, especially yeah. right? big time. It's the most volatile sport ever. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know why, like, I love racing. I love the sporting side, but the business side is the worst. You know, when you're in the junior ranks, I listened to Matt Clark's um, yeah. episode and uh, that you just put out. And it's like, man, I don't miss those times when you have to like raise budget. You start the season, not knowing if you have the budget to finish it. Like what is up with that? It's so weird. It's so yeah. wrong. And then like the reward at the end is not even good enough to pay off anything like no. once you make it like let's say you're in single seaters at what point does it end right, right? it's it continually doesn't. a hamster wheel how and many even- guys in indycar are still paying right now it never ends it will never end no because there has to be somebody that stands up and says let's put an end to it the economics don't work i'm not an, an economist but i don't know I feel like enough people watch and there might be a system where there could be a distribution mm. in motorsport and like of TV money, you mean? Yeah, of TV money a yeah. little bit more because I feel like it's being guarded. Mm, for sure. I, and again, I don't know the numbers. It could be that I'm speaking completely. Yeah, out it could of, be that it place. doesn't. Just there's not. Maybe they don't viewers. make. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, right? Yeah. We're just we're just yeah. speaking uh, based off of what we see. But that Cup model, like they get some of the TV money, the like charter, Formula One, the Charter guys, and Formula One, right? Yeah, they both get some of the TV money, and that's what I had Matt Williamson on Dirt Modified Guy, and he's saying the the big Dirt Modified series, they're gonna go. Uh, to a charter system for TV money, for streaming money. Like the top five guys in the that's season awesome. get some of the streaming money. That's incredible. Yeah. I think that's it needs to start going in that direction because the the economics don't make sense. They don't line up, you know, for racing. As a driver, it's fine because like I'm employed by a manufacturer. Like it's fine for right. me. Um, right. But I've made it to the end of, you know, I found the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Maybe it's not what I envisioned when I grew up because I was trying to go to Formula One, but reality set in and it's like, well, I don't have a billionaire as a father, unfortunately. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you don't have talent. Yeah. Or hooked up with a guy who does have a billion dollars who just Absolutely. really likes you. And yeah. And that's a big it. misconception. People thinking that if you have family money that you're not good because <laughs> it absolutely doesn't mean that. Like the amount of things I see on the internet, it's wild. I think it's out of jealousy mostly. A hundred percent. Usually. And it doesn't take take away uh, anybody's talent. No. Like, and I, I had Stroll on and I said, look, like, you know, when you dominated F4, 
did that shut guys up? He's like, eh, no, nah, barely. Not, right? Yeah, there's always something. Yeah, always something. Why you dominate? Yeah, it's because you spent more money or this, and that drives me bonkers. Like yeah. when people talk about other like other drivers. Yeah. Like, oh, it's oh, sometimes it's, it's warranted. Sure. And there maybe is a more talented guy that didn't have as much funds, but it's always going to be like that. But yeah, what are but you going to do? Going about back that? to the way it should be. I mean, I don't see. I and I'm just a driver. But <laughs> not an economist. <laughs> it doesn't matter for me. Um, but to a certain extent, it does in terms of sustainability. Mm-hmm. I feel like there could maybe be a better system for teams to get a payout because the prize money is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what is sports car prize money like? Yeah. Is there any sports car racing series at all that you say you win the race, it pays for the weekend? No, never. What about... Not even close. Not even 10%. Like V8 supercars, DTM... Probably not. Um, I think through sponsorship and DTM, apparently they're uh, they could make money. Yeah, but through sponsorship, through like, sponsorship, could, and through sponsorship, I could make money go kart racing. Yeah, right. But I don't know how that works with the series. Yeah, like, I doubt. I doubt for it. IMSA, for uh, for instance, uh, prize money. So I'll tell you when we won the Rolex Twenty Four in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, it was about seventy thousand prize money to win. You know how much it cost? Uh, I'm just gonna take a stab in the dark. 250 grand? Uh, almost a million. After the rebuild of the gearbox, okay, after 24 so it hours. It wasn't even close. <laughs> so those, I mean, I'm not a mathematician <laughs> by any means, but I don't think those yeah. numbers add together it's about in any way. 930 grand short. Yes. Yeah. So just in tires, it's like 250,000 or something. I had no idea it was that expensive. Yeah. Okay. And so then maybe the car, the cars 250 are 50 grand per person, I'm right on the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Holy cow. It's, um, it just doesn't make sense. Now, prototypes, I'm not sure how that works. I think that they get a um, bigger amount of the prize money. Okay. Yeah, but GT, it's undervalued and underappreciated, I would say, even though it's some of the best racing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the prize money, I don't know. You'll never make the money that you spend. So you have to be passionate. Yeah. You need to have some other sort of like revenue. Yep. Um, like some sort of way to pay for it that you could make sense of right otherwise it's just purely a passion project right right and it's so like it that there's almost something like internally like as a driver maybe it's a little different for you where you're you're hired by the manufacturer or whatever but like where it, if it you know in your heart of hearts if it's just a passion project and it doesn't have some sort of like return it's like this isn't sustainable you know this will end at some point yeah, but it like never has, especially for GT prototypes. Yes. No, no, I mean teams. Different. Oh, the team. The team like that ends. Like well, the, the cycle through different teams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. team cycle. There's some that have been there for a long, sure. long time, sure. and they are the ones that have like the business model that is sustainable. Exactly. Um, but then you have other teams that are kind of there for a short time. Yeah. And it's a very good time. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's very short. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it's just. You always want to line yourself up with those teams that are going to be there for a while. For sure. So um, yeah. I'm happy I, I, where I'm at right now. That's I good. think that, and I love the the whole atmosphere in Windward. I hope they're going to be in it for a long time. And it seems as though they're going to be there for a yeah. while. They yeah, have a long-term great. project. They just built a new facility in uh, Houston. It's like 40,000 square foot facility, state of the art. Like it's, it's pretty wild. Would you ever move to the States? Mm, I don't know where I would want to move. Like I was thinking... I was almost certain I was going to move like two years ago. Well, yeah, man, same. Like one more year of COVID and it's like, I'm out. I can't live like this. But I don't know, man. Like where do you want to live in the world now? You got to pick your poison. For sure. An island? And it's like, (laughs) (laughs) then you're cut off from society. But it's so nice to, you. you, like just naturally you live where you grow up and like your family and stuff like that. That's like like, the reason why I'm still in Toronto is because it's just convenient. All my friends and families here. It's an easy hub to travel through. Super easy. So that's like a really big plus considering I'm on a plane every week. Yeah. Um, last year, 2023, I had um, like 56 flight segments, like 53, mm-hmm. and I'd fly direct to the flight, like to the venues, right? So it's like 56 flights oh. last year. And then probably the same this and, year. And th- that's 56 flights. I'm driving to Watkins Glen, Detroit, uh, Indy, like, you know, things like that I'm driving. Right. Right. So. Toronto, like CTMP, we have the home race. So we had a lot of races. Um, 
and it's a nice hub. Like we're close to a lot of these places. So yeah. it's, it's easy to get to even to travel to Europe or to Asia. It's nice. Yeah. Like direct flights. Yeah. It'd be a pain to connect everywhere. For sure. I'm going direct to Tokyo next week. Oh, no way. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. I might be going uh, to Asia this year a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just to travel. Or to race? Yeah, oh, maybe to travel. race. Maybe to race. <laughs> travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So I asked, run me through everything you do for a living because it's like you're a YouTuber, yeah. you're a race car driver, you're a real life coacher, you're a sim coacher. Yeah. You... Completely winging everything, by yeah. the way. Yeah. But racing is probably my number one focus. Well, not probably. It is my number one focus. Right. Racing. And number one source of income. Yes. Okay. Uh, not really, okay. actually. That is, Depends yeah. how you look at it. Sure. Short term, yes. Long yep. term, no. Okay, curious I about think that. there are limitations to GT racing mm. in terms of like what you can earn. Sure. Um, I look at it like, okay, it's good for now. Yep. And it's an incredible opportunity. I love it. Very passionate about it. I love everything about racing. But there are, are financial limitations if that's what you're looking for. If you want to increase your threshold, your ceiling. Yep. You're not going to do that through racing. You can only go so far. Sure. Unless you're in Formula One and you're Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen. Sixty-two Stabin. million dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there are <laughs> limitations. You know, it's this is your salary range. It's either um, you're paying yep. or <laughs> you're making up to X amount, yep. which is you know it's reasonable. Sure. Let's say it's more than okay. normal. Okay. Um, but it's an incredible opportunity, right? Not many people get to do this for a living and get paid to do it. Yeah. So I'm very fortunate to do that and to race for an incredible manufacturer, uh, Mercedes AMG, and such a good f like racing family environment. Mercedes is incredible. They're yeah. really they allow you to be yourself and to have your own personality, which I love. Yeah, which you certainly have. Yeah, and yeah. they're encouraging the social media stuff, for right. instance, which is actually part of our job as Mercedes drivers is to be an ambassador for Mercedes and to be uh, very uh, prevalent on social media and yep. to showcase yourself and your lifestyle. Mm. They really like that. So it kind of complements each other. Starting YouTube, um, that kind of happened after doing a lot of live streams on Twitch. The live streams were great. It was awesome. But again, it's like it will only take you so far with the reach because there's not a very, um, let's say, great amount of discoverability on Twitch. Or just... The total users compared to YouTube? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That as well. Yeah. But it's a really nice community. It's very tight knit. Sure. Um, and they're loyal on yep. Twitch. And I love like streaming on that platform. It's nice. Instagram, do that, but I don't really make an income off of Instagram. Tough to Although, make money on Instagram. Yes, yes and no. Like here and there, brand partnerships and things like that. Sure. Of the brands I want to work with, because I'm huge on that. I don't just, uh, you got to see the inbox. It's like, it's not like uh, there's a, infinite amount of partnerships but there's a lot that come in through racing and through sim racing especially because the connection yeah and i'm like yeah i don't want to like i appreciate that but i don't want to work with this company because it's not like my heart's not in it yeah i can't from the bottom of my can't heart wear say, a zam helmet <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't say that like yeah i i believe in this 100 percent I would feel like I'm lying. Yeah. And I can't do you that. Can't, yeah. You so can't. everybody, I, th I have a certain level of integrity I must uphold. Yeah. And it's not even a good business decision to do that no. in the long term. Because then no. it's like, oh, this I mean, guy's just a sellout. I mean, you could probably make a lot of money if you like took these contracts and they pay really well. But it me there's more to money. Like there's there are more, some yeah. things that mean more to me than money. Sure. Right. Yeah. I, and that's happiness. And also, my clean conscience to be able to say, like, I truly believe in this. Yep. Like you said, you have to live it. And, and if you want to represent something, you have to live it and act it. Yep. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And uh, obviously, you have to be smart with your business and things like that. But I have you know, brand partnerships and sim racing, which okay. is actually a pretty interesting source of income, which yeah. I didn't think that would ever happen. But yeah, uh, not even 10 years. Apparently ago. there aren't many sim racing drivers that race in real life at okay. a high level. Okay. So it's a very niche, like, let's say there, there are, it's a niche market for who are you going to get? Right. Who are you going to have to represent that's good on camera that can represent your brand well and can actually articulate what, what's happening. Right. Behind so, the sim so and the real brand time. deals is where you're, you're finding other income through yeah, brand deals, social media, yep. um, like brand deals on social media. 
YouTube, like the ad stuff, you don't really, it's mostly brand deals where you make for sure a, a good amount of income. Unless you're Mr. Beast yeah. doing numbers like that. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the ad share, the revenue share on like the ad sense yeah. is very small. Yeah. I, see. I lose money just, uh, sure. I can say that. Yeah. I technically lose money based on having an editor Yeah. and the numbers of my channels producing at this point, but sure. I'm only eight months in or nine months in. But we're at 27,000. Yeah, dude, you've got 20, a huge potential on your YouTube. I don't know what the subs are. I honestly don't even look. Yeah. I don't care about that because I know that sometimes I'll check in just to see what's working, what topics are working. But I just want to put out the stuff I want to put out, topics I'm passionate about. I could just, I can throw up tips all day. Yeah. But I don't want to be the tip guy. Mm, you know, okay. just there for the tips. Right. Um. Uh, but but there's a, there's a, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a uh, and I was going to ask you like, so there's, there's call it two ends of the spectrum as, as being a racer and then like being so public, like you can either just vlog race day yeah. or full on like tips. I'm and blending it's like, everything. And, yeah. I want to just be hybrid. I yeah. want to blend sim racing, real racing, the lifestyle, the prep that goes into real racing, tips, advice, um, showing my equipment, how I set things up, my room, just to give people inspiration because I love that stuff. I love room yeah. tours. I also like learning things. So yep. all the things you'll see on my YouTube channel are things I actually like. I'm not just chasing something that I know is going to be uh, successful because it won't really represent me. Yep. I think if you find your passion and you figure out how to curate that in a way where it's appealing and easy to digest, then you'll do well. Yeah. So, and consistency is so important. So, yeah, dude, because if you, it's hard. Yeah. And it's like, okay, <clears throat> you know, unless, again, like, unless you're Mr. Beast and you can do a, you know, 100 bajillion views. Yeah. If you do five videos with like, you know, average views compared to one video that, you know what I mean? Like, if you do more and more videos, there's bigger and bigger potential for one to hit or just, you know, more views across yeah. those videos. And I even see that now. It's, it's crazy to look back and just see like, okay, well, what happened? Uh, why are the numbers so different this month? And then you'll go and see that one of your videos you did six months ago picked up again and doubled the view count. Yeah. It went from like 80 to 160. I'm like, whoa, what happened there? Yeah. It's just, I don't understand it, but it's a video that I actually liked. Yeah. And there are some other videos I liked. For instance, I made a video on how we make a racing seat. Okay. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Right? Like, it's a very interesting process. Yeah. And I, sh I vlogged the whole thing and showed the step-by-step -step process of how you mean, we like make... like the pour? Yeah, the pour. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how we make the base seat, and then I have to make an insert inside that because yep. I'm smaller. Yep. Um, and I was like, wow, that's a... This is a cool video. Yeah. I'm super intrigued by it. But it didn't really do that well. Maybe like 10,000 views. Sure. But then I, I put out a video that's very basic on three steps of breaking... And it's like 150,000. Everyone like, needs to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could do that all day. Just teach people how to break and, and spin it in different ways. And it would probably do well. But I also want to showcase other things I find interesting. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there's never enough, like, there's never enough good content out there on like, well, you know, like you go to YouTube to find a very specific answer or how to do something very specifically. And there's never enough content on it. Yeah. You know? And I also look for that. I don't want to copy anybody. Mm -hmm. There are already people copying me, funny sure. enough. Yeah. Like literally one-to-one -one rip of my stuff. I'm like, it's annoying. I guess it's flattering, but also annoying because it's like, man, just at one point people will see that and, and they're just not going to care because it's not really authentic. It's not you. Right, right, right. There's one thing to be inspired. And I take inspiration from many people, even outside of the industry. Sure. But I want to to be my own. Yeah. I want to be unique and yeah. So that's kind of been interesting lately. Is there uh, but any... it's a sign of success, I guess. Or oh, for sure. Yeah. Flat success. Flat what is success? Yeah. Like, flattery is the whatever you, form of it's whatever you perceive it to be for sure. So is there, you said you get inspiration from outside. Is there anyone that you look up to? Maybe it's in racing. Maybe it's not that you're like, okay, this guy has it dialed in. Like they're doing it right. Like a good role model model or something for someone who's doing something similar to you. Mm, there's a couple channels on YouTube. Like I'll, it's more so inspiration in terms of the aesthetic and mm. the production okay. value and the structure of videos. Yeah. But 
it's kind of uh, it's a moving target right now because I'm I'm trying to find out what's most natural for me because I still don't feel like I'm at the most natural state that it could possibly be. Mm. I don't like staged or scripted things. Right. I uh, I like to quick think. So just in the moment, perform like under pressure. Yeah. So um, it's easier. Just do them all live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's why live streaming is so great. I love live streaming. Right. Because it's just you say whatever. And normally I say okay things. But sometimes I say dumb things. Sure. It happens. Do, but yeah. it's raw. It's organic. Yeah. I like that. And so I'm testing coming up with you know future videos more raw organic stuff yeah rather than really highly produced highly edited right because i like high quality gear and sharp images and good lighting and things like that but i also don't want it to be um something that's so unattainable that you're so far away from it right right for sure for sure yeah it's interesting i was talking to um chase cabry uh and he he's uh Haley deegan's fiance and he runs her whole youtube channel and all that stuff and he's like Cause he's, they're doing YouTube like heavy, like they're, yeah, she, she, it's crushing. Yeah. And they're doing two videos a week and he's like, man, I'm on this roller coaster ride of like, you got to be bigger and better every week. And it's like, that's, that doesn't seem fun. That doesn't seem sustainable. That's why I don't want to do it like that. Right. I don't want to ever think that that's going to be my future. Mm. I don't look at the numbers. I don't care. Like, like I said, I'm losing a little bit of money sometimes. It's starting to pay off because the the partnerships come into play and it probably yeah. is an balancing investment. it. Investment. But if you look at it from a pure like video versus the production that goes into it, yeah. it's a deficit. Sure. But long term, I know but it's, that if it, you have a good product, you yeah. can sell a good product. And it's cheaper than putting an ad in a newspaper. And we've right? sold way more gloves now. Like Moradness yeah. is like talking about the sources of income and, and Moradness is the future for that's um, yeah for us like so you guys just like my wife runs more Adness by herself right we had someone working with us but um it just wasn't a good fit sure um just didn't understand the system and um i guess the industry yeah because you still need to have some sort of understanding of motorsport and also yeah. organization and things like that right but jess is like a one woman show nice i couldn't do this without jess so what are you guys so, doing hats yeah we started gloves. with hats okay I don't know if I talked about it on the. I don't think so. No, before, but hats. Then we did like t-shirts and they were kind of like low quality, like generic shells. I didn't like that. Yeah. Because I want good quality stuff. I saw. I'm like, I don't want to wear that. And if I don't want to wear it, yeah, I'm not selling shit. it to anybody. Yeah, for sure. So I, I want to be happy. I yeah. wear. It's actually great because I don't buy clothes anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just make clothes. <laughs> yeah. So it, like the spend <laughs> has yeah. gone down. Right. Um. So I just make the clothes I want to wear. <laughs> I just wear free t-shirts. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so so yeah, we evolved into t-shirts and like, what can you wear at the racetrack? Yeah, it's kind of stuff. Okay. So t-shirts, like sweatpants, um, things that you're comfortable in. We're thinking like, okay, you're there for Rolex Twenty Four. You're there chilling for the race. What are you wearing? Okay. You're wearing sweatpants and you're chilling at your RV or your campsite and you have your hoodie, your sweatpants, your, you know, jersey or t-shirt that's like racing inspired. Yep. Um, with prints or whatever it may be. Then with COVID, I uh, was on the sim. That's where the sim racing started. And I did mention that before uh, in the last episode. So got into sim racing, was wearing my racing gloves, and they were ripping all the time because mm. they're not made to endure that like that amount of driving. They're they're <laughs> no, thinner, not that many hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and sim drivers are way like like they drive way more than real drivers. Sure, you know some guys are driving three hours a day, five hours, eight hours a day. Oh my, God. seven days a week. No, oh I I know that firsthand. And the top guys that are like ten thousand I rating, they're ten to twelve hours a day. On the sim. So imagine 10 to 12 hours. That's like more than you might do in a race season sometimes. Probably for me, right? for sure. Last and the season. gloves have to hold up. Yeah. For And if you don't if you don't time. wear gloves, you're gonna just destroy your wheel. Yeah, I, I started racing without gloves, then yeah. I was sweating. Right. And that's why I started wearing gloves, because my hands were sweaty. Right. Like clammy, you know. They when you're just hot lapping, you're like kind of cruising around, it's fine. When you go into a race and you you know you're your heart rate's elevated, you're nervous a little bit, your body perspirates. Yeah. So your hands start sweating and then you lose the grip on the wheel and people are like, well, it's not a performance enhancing product. Like, but it is because if your hands are sliding, then you're not as sharp and precise with your inputs. Sure. So you are missing apexes or you're missing turning points. For sure. I always wear gloves. Yep. 
it's just something I have to do. And also your, your gear doesn't get like grimy and dirty. Right. So we found a hole in the market. We're like, let's, why am I wearing my Adidas gloves or OMP or whatever? Why can't I just, let's make our own. Yeah. So that aren't fireproof. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to make them fireproof. They don't, um, they pass technically all the carding, uh, sure. parameters. Now I believe there are new ones that are going to be in place for international racing. Really? Where you, yeah, essentially you're going to need to pay money to get them certified now. So there's a new FIA sticker. Yes. So FIA for, carding sticker on gloves means what? Cause they're not fireproof. Yeah. For, they're going to test it for abrasion and, uh, the stitching, I guess just to, yeah, for safety. Yeah. Want to hear something crazy? Yeah. Uh, NASCAR doesn't recognize FIA. Yeah, they do SFI. Yeah. So you can show it's good enough for F1, but it is not good enough for NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Uh, yeah, Grosjean, uh, yeah, yeah, that was no good. We didn't like the performance of his yeah. safety gear yeah, when he stuff. hit the wall and... <laughs> like fireball. A, a million G. Yeah. Caught yeah. into flames. <laughs> yeah. Not good enough. Sorry, you're going to need a different acronym. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, it's the um, w- the the alphabet uh, mob. Yeah. Right? That's what it's called. Yeah. 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 Uh, so or alphabet gangsters. Right. right <laughs> I heard right. Aaron Rodgers call it that, and yeah, I love that. that. What does he mean by that? Yeah. CIA, FBI, those guys. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The alphabet, whatever yeah, letters. Yeah. FDA. Yeah. Um. So <clears throat> we're gonna end up doing that. Yeah. But we we thought, okay, this is there's a void in the market. Mm-hmm. I want to make a product that's durable. Obviously, there are downfalls. Maybe it's a little thicker than another glove, but I don't mind the thickness. It's it has the right blend of thickness. Like, it's not so thick. It's not so thin. Right. Good grip, the fit, everything. It's been tuned over, you know, it's yeah. three years now. And you guys are selling a bunch of them. A lot. It's insane. We have our office now. Yeah. We have a Moradness HQ, nice. call it. Um, and I have my... Uh, streaming studio recording studio in the office now okay and uh it's kind of cool to separate home and uh, work yeah i think that's you know my dad always said that and he lives has always lived next door and he's like you have to go to the office and like when COVID hit he's like i don't know i don't think this is good all these people working from home like you have to separate a little bit yeah you know even if it's just like a really you know home office we still don't turn off fully but no not anymore at least in this stage we're in such an insane growth period where with YouTube, with Twitch, with social, with all the busy racing schedule, the, you know, just the brand is naturally getting out there. Mm. Commentators, their kids, like uh, Brian Till. Yep. His his son, he Brian calls me one night, and he's like, it, it, like late at night, like 9 p.m. He's like, hey, Morad, um, the funniest thing happened, actually. My son Connor is like, hey, you know this, like, sim driver named Daniel Morad? Yeah. And it's like, oh, I know a real driver named Daniel Morad. It's like, no, no, he's like big on sim. Like, look at his YouTube video. It's like, yeah, no, that's that's the same guy. The same guy. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I want him. You know he makes gloves? And it's just the funniest thing to hear that. So Brian was just like beside him. He was like, how? He, yeah. He's like, teach me this industry. Like, I don't understand it and how big it is. And now his eyes are open to it. And um, so I prepared some custom gloves for, for Connor. Nice. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. So more and more people are aware of this and it's blown up youtube especially has just popped it off yeah i think we we don't have the metrics exactly because it's hard to track because we've done marketing campaigns now okay yeah. so we're um so jess went to like this marketing course and yep. she was part of this program where they taught her how to do online marketing ads yep. on social and she's self-taught like she learned everything she got these booklets she taught herself everything youtube videos this and that and she does everything, like runs the website, nice. the marketing campaign. I do the YouTube, which I f- push people to that. And yeah. uh, we do ads on YouTube as well. So like they may get an ad for gloves and then get my video. Right, right, right. So it's like, it's in your face all the time. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I don't want it to be me. Uh, it's a community. We're all in it together. Mm. And that's the coolest thing about it. I've always wanted that to not have it rely just on me. Right. Do you... Uh, so, yeah, now we make gloves that are really, really good for so is that your is that your best seller? Oh, 100%. Gloves, okay. Yeah, yeah. gloves. And we didn't think... We're, it was... We pivoted hard when we made the gloves and then we made a glove that was high quality at an affordable price. Yeah. You know, at 
right now we're currently selling them for 95 Canadian yep. and 85, I think, or 90 for the shorter ones. Okay. So it's reasonable. Yeah. It's like 70 US. Yeah, reasonable. You can't be charging 200 bucks. Like it's. Yeah, like yeah. most gloves are 200 bucks. Like carding gloves, good ones are 200 for outside seam. So we make outside seam that are. Yep. Like, I don't know how anyone can wear inside seam. No, oh, no, no. They're like, <laughs> man, they look good aesthetically when you wear them. It's like, wow, it's slim and slim. I don't even think they look good. Oh, yeah. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. I I one time had some, like, gloves from my, the team. They're like, oh, here are some gloves. I'm like, inside seam? Yeah. I'm going to continue to wear the other ones. Like, yeah. It's just one of those things you feel it. You can't. And, and then you, you can't it. unfeel it when no. you're even driving. You, when you're driving the car, you feel it. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. So, like, we make outside seam, like, curved fingers so you don't have the bunching on the palm yep. and the fingers. Because, like, you're in the claw position when you drive. Yep. Everyone that measures are like, the glove's too small. I'm like, dude, do you drive like that? Yeah. No, yeah. you drive like this. How does it feel like this? Yeah. How does it feel with a claw? Yeah. Oh, it feels good now? Cool. That's how it's made. Yeah, no. right. Having me help with the design, I know what needs to be done because I have the experience. Right? It's like you—you you could tell me how you would want your glove. Oh, for you sure. You drive cars. I actually got a custom glove made. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So it's important. So that's a huge asset and why it's working so well because people are like, "Well, what makes you better than the big glove companies like these other ones, Sparco, Alpine Star?" Mm. It's like, well, I hear it from the customers right away and obviously anything can happen it's material things can rip and you're not going to have a hundred percent success right but they're apparently more durable and that's just from customer feedback and that's what we want to hear we want to make something that is very very durable for sim racing so for sure that's taken off like insane that's great that's yeah. great do you ever play around um like as of whatever call it the last year how involved in like fooling around with ai are you not so much, okay. but um, I'm doing some AI trading right now. What's that? Like what? Like stock trading? Yeah, yeah. My buddy, oh, your AI. Oh, you're trading in an AI companies, or you're having an AI trade for you? Yeah. Which one? AI trades for you. But the AI trades for you. Yeah. Is it pretty good? No, nah, it's more of a joke right now. Okay. Like, <laughs> uh, I'll make a a long like kind of a long story very short. Okay. I did the sim race. I won some crypto. I won some Bitcoin. Sure by winning this race it was like the prize money and it was stuck in an, in an account in australia for like the longest time i didn't know how to take it out my buddy's like um yeah you can actually just transfer it from this wallet to that wallet i'm like oh i didn't know you could do that because right. i couldn't register on this site because in canada i could not register to it mm. so he's like yeah you here's how you take it out so he took it out and like just he's like oh you should try this try investing it in this ai trading app I'm like well it's free money it's not mine let's see what's going to happen it actually is all right. Nice. Three days, I've made 20 bucks off of uh, 400. So oh, good, good, good. So AI it's terrible. Trading. I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> it's a joke, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's a joke. I, um, yeah, but realistically, no, you? I don't, like, I, no. I mean, I fool around with AI a little bit, like chat GPT-4 and stuff like that. But, like, I'm just wondering, like, like, man, the future is coming at us so fast. And, like, yeah. What does the AI mean for for sim racing? Like, I think that that who knows, you know, like is or real racing, like as far as setups and all this stuff goes, like, like, and you know, when does the AI become conscious? Like, and will we even know if it is or not? Like, it's it's like it's don't coming get me down so this fast. Path, okay, don't get me down this path. No, oh, I, I've are, been actually looking into uh, maybe not so much AI as much as uh, like let's say the aerial phenomenon we're seeing now and like all the oh. disclosure and things like that. I'm actually really interested by it. Yeah. And anyone that says, Oh, it's all, eh, it's, it's not happening. Like, how can you say that? Yeah, something's happening. Something's happening. We don't know what is happening. AI is very interesting because it's very intelligent. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it can go, where it's going to go, but it's probably going to exponentially change the way we interact with technology. Mm -hmm. I would say, I don't know how it's going to affect motorsport. Maybe engineers might. Yeah. Um, that's probably something that would go first. I, I don't know if you could really remove the driver element because people still want to see humans competing, like gladiators. For sure. For sure. But like, but. and I guess even, um, you know, driving style, like even if there's a theoretical perfect setup, it might not work for X yeah. versus Y driver. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was thinking like, that's really how you create a true spec series. Yeah. With the AI, like, okay, the AI scans the car, everything's the same. Boom. Everyone drives the same shit. Yeah. That'd be boring. You think it would be boring or would it be the best battling ever? I don't know. I think, um, not everybody can drive every equipment. Yeah. If you look at, for instance, in F1, look at Max Verstappen versus Checo. Yep. Right? Or even Albon in the past, like, they could not drive. Or Ricardo versus Norris. They could not adapt the car to one driver. So if you find, like, a theoretical perfect setup for the car, maybe it's not perfect for the driver. Yeah. And I think you kind of even said it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. For sure. But um, I don't know. It's interesting. Are we even going to last that long? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there are, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what is going to happen? I, we're learning so much. I am so fascinated with things outside of racing. Yeah. Very passionate about space, exploration, understanding new things outside of what I know. Yeah. I love learning. I, I'm very passionate about learning new things and um, ingesting information. Same. And we live in, uh, we live in, like, we're so fortunate. Like, we live in a time where you can just listen to books and watch YouTube videos and stuff. And, like, you know, even some of this, not to say <clears throat> the difference between wisdom and, and just, you know, consuming books, but, you know, some of the smartest guys 500 years ago haven't read as many books as me. I mean, certainly still way smarter, but like just don't have the access to all that information, right? Like, and to even have a book back then was so yeah. rare. And now it's just like, oh, there's four. You can ask Google anything <laughs> you want. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we yeah. actually have a friend, uh, their their kid is like really curious. So mm. he, he has a limit on how much he can talk to Google and ask questions. Really? Yeah. But, really? Which I find very interesting because, like, man, kids can become either really, really dumb or really smart. For if sure. they watch TikTok all day, they're going to be, like, brainless yeah. and empty. But if you start questioning things and ask questions, but it depends. You have to be careful where you get your sources from on very delicate situations because mm -hmm. it's very, very corrupt and tailored. Yeah. Yeah. And you you can get, you know, thrown down into some algorithm and become some sort of, you know, Looney Tune extremist yes. without, you know looking at the whole spectrum of, yeah. of things for sure. You need to take a balanced amount of information in. Yeah. It can't just be down one specific hole. For sure. For sure. Man, yeah. um, appreciate you coming on. Where uh, where can people follow you on your 53 different yeah, platforms? Yeah, 53. <laughs> hmm. Let's start from the top. <laughs> no, I mean, now YouTube is just popping off and I'm pushing for it. Yeah. Um, so if you want to learn anything on YouTube, yeah. that's a really nice place to go. Learn, see the behind the scenes. Um, I'm always reading the comments, which is actually really hard to keep up with now. I said in the beginning when I was just starting, like the first video, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be really active in the comments. And then the video got like 60,000 views. The first one, I'm like, damn, yeah, there's a thousand comments. I guess I got to read them all. Yep. So I, I read and answered all of them. Like the first videos, I've answered every single comment. Like recently, it's hard to keep up. Well, I don't want to live on my right? phone. Yeah. Now I spend 30 minutes a day and I take the most recent ones. So I'll yep. spend 30 minutes uh, in the morning, I'll just answer questions and comments, and I even make videos on them now. So if you have any questions, people can ask them, okay. and I make videos on those questions. Cool. Um, but yeah, Twitch live streams are really nice. It's chill, just eye racing, maybe reviewing some races if I'm allowed to this year. Um, there's regulations on that for TV rights. Okay. Um, we'll see what we can do. I think it's a benefit if I show it because. I didn't bring many new fans, but I brought a lot of new fans sure. from my community that were F1 or NASCAR fans to sports car racing. I think it's a benefit for everyone if we just remove those regulations and um, allow me to show, let's say, onboard video. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I Instagram agree. super active on everything yep. as much as possible. If anyone wants to reach out to me, they can, Kay. basically. And you'll answer. For the most part. Yeah, I think unless it goes to a hidden folder or something, or like months later, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I just saw this now. You get that? Yeah. Like request folders and yeah, things? Yeah, oh yeah, and I, like I didn't even know that that was there for like the first 10 years of Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit. Man, if you go, there's a, I still have so many that, there's like two layers of that too. Yeah, there's like general and then like hidden or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so like I've been digging through it. Like, there's some interesting ones. I'm sure I wish are. I could make a compilation of the, the messages. You should. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be pretty hilarious, actually. Oh, uh, that's good. Man, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Good luck at Daytona. Thanks, man. See you guys next week.